Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Burrell. Tom, there you go. Yeah, did so. Tom actually has the re, the the title of his SVP of the topic we've been talking about: retention. Hi guys. Um, yeah, I'm SVP of retention at the zone. Um, that's the zone. If you hadn't guessed, we're an OTT sports streaming service. Um, we operate in 200 markets around the world. Um, we're pr particularly strong in five territories. So in Japan, we have uh, a lot of baseball rights. We have a lot of um, uh, European football. We have J League as well, uh, exclusively on the platform. In Italy, we have all of the Serie A rights. In Spain, we have a lot of motorsport and, and, uh, and this season, the Liga. Uh, in Germany, we have Bundesliga and Champions League rights. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and really what we do is we, we kind of really focus in on a key market to, to kind of uh, and, and, and purchase rights within that market to kind of really go heavy on that market. But um, outside of those, those kind of core five territories, we have a, a, a big boxing proposition. Uh, and that's what we're known for in the UK. I think, um, um, you know, if you're aware of the zone, you would be aware of the, the fights we have on the platform. Um, I'm uh, SVP of uh, subscription retention marketing at DAZN. Uh, and I'm responsible for our, um, all of our retention activity across all our markets. So that covers a number of areas, so, uh, so technology, so retention strategy, customer life, lifetime value management, um, uh, research, uh, and loyalty. Um, we have, within, the, within, that, within that, that team, we have um, small teams in each of the different territories in Spain, in Italy, in, in Germany, in Japan, and, and in Canada um, that focus in on delivering and executing the programs in those local markets. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is, is our onboarding program. And now you, you saw in the video, we're a, we're a monthly subscription service. So that means you can cancel any time. So customers can, can, uh, can come on the platform uh, and stay a month. And at the end of that billing month, if they don't want to con continue staying on the platform, then they can drop off the platform. When we do research, we know that a large proportion of our customers say that they love lots of sports. If you're a sports fan and, you, and you're asked to fill in a survey or questionnaire or, con or conduct poll research, you will tell the interviewer that you like lots of different sports. But in reality, customers, when they come onto the platform, when it comes to uh, parting with their hard-earned cash, come in for one sport. They come in for one sport that they really want to watch, and they spend 80 to 90% of their time watching that one sport. So what that, that means is when you have a cancel any time um, uh, subscription service, if you have a single sport preference, is you get a lot of high early life churns. You get a lot of customers come in for a big event and leave because they're very susceptible to uh, the sports season, they're susceptible to the cycle um, um, of events that are happening around their favorite team, they're susceptible to the performance of, their, of their, their preferred team. So what I wanted to do today is to take you through how we're trying to address that challenge and the work we're doing to improve our onboarding program in order to, to encourage stickiness within the platform. So we did a lot of, we've done a lot of research into our audience and, and, and you know, what we've seen is that, that subscription is absolutely triggered by live events. Come, customers come in to watch a key event, whether that be a fight, whether that be a, uh, a big Champions League game, whether that be a baseball event, whether that be an NFL game in, the, in, in Canada. Um, what was also clear is that customers were not clear on the content that was on offer, right? So they come in for a big event, they're interested in lots of sports. That, that, that single event has driven them into the platform, but they're not really clear on everything else that the, the platform had to offer. There was also a lack of awareness of how to get the most from the design products. Like being an OTT service, we're very different to a, uh, a um, you know, standard uh, sports broadcaster, like a, um, like a Sky Sports, for example. There's a lot of features and benefits that we can build into the products and, and the services that we have done. We've got a brilliant product team that's done a great job on that. Um, um, that customers are not, not aware of when they're brand new to the platform, because all they're doing is they're wanting to watch this single event. They just want to watch this, the event that they've been into. Uh, and then we also see that there's real social and technological barriers to living room adoption. So if customers are watching um, DAZN on the, um, on the big screen, they're much more likely to be loyal, right? If you're watching sport, it's a much better experience to watch it on the big screen in your living room. Um, um, but but what we saw is that you know, some customers, particularly in markets like Italy and Japan, where they've got aging populations, um, they found it a little bit complex to understand. They have to download an app to the TV. And, and, so, and in some cases, they don't even have a smart TV that would enable that. So they need to use something else like a Chromecast or an Amazon Fire Stick. So what we looked to was um, academic research. So there's a lot of work being done around choice architecture. And it, sound, it sounds really simple, but, but as designers of the onboarding journey, 
We are choice architects, so we are responsible for arranging the context in which people make decisions. So Taylor and Stunstein have proven very small details can have a massive impact on customer behavior. And so to use a sporting analogy, um, where the groundsman places the pin on a green of a golf course can really affect how the golfer takes the drive or takes the, the shot into the green. Um, to use a, a, uh, a food analogy in a kid's canteen, placing fruit at eye level when kids are going into the canteen to get their lunch will significantly impact whether they actually pick up a piece of fruit or not, right? Really, really, really simple stuff. So what we wanted to do is, or I should say, what we wanted to do is to leverage choice ar architecture to use the power of those small details to focus customers' attention on a particular direction to enable them to, 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 to get advantage from the of the service that we provide. So how we did that was, um, or, or to be successful, I should say, we need to, 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 it needed to nudge our customers to do things that benefit their long-term engagement in the product. So we wanted to enable customers to, to get benefit from our service, um, while, um, which would obviously be a benefit to them, but obviously, conversely, it would also be a benefit to us because they're more likely to stay loyal and stay engaged. And so those nudges, they need to be really optional. So uh, if you think about the fruits example in the, in the kids' canteen, it's optional. They can avoid it or they can take it up. But by putting it at eye level, it makes a difference. If you're a pro golfer, the pin's in a different position to the way it was the day before, it massively impacts the way you take the shot. If you're an amateur, it probably doesn't, right? Because you're going to play the, same, the shot the same way. And so we wanted to create nudges that could alter behavior in a predictable way. And so um, this is an example of how it works. So we, we compiled a, uh, a list of features, so living room adoption, explaining to customers how they can get to zone set up on their living room um, TV, how they can get the app working on their living room TV. Setting a reminder. We have this great feature where customers can set a reminder for an event that they want to watch. So if you want to watch Arsenal Tottenham on the weekend, then you can set a reminder, and then you'll get a push notification via our ship that, that tells you when that event's about to start. We also go a step further with the product where you can actually follow your team. So if you're, say, a Liverpool fan or you, you want to follow a partic particular boxer, for example, um, every time that, that, that team or that, that boxer's on the platform, you get a push notification to tell you that the event's about to start, including your favorite team or, or, or boxer. We also want to uh, encourage customers to connect on multiple devices. Like the most important device to connect on is, is on the big screen, but a lot, a lot of customers will, will sign up for the zone on either the app or on desktop web. And if they're signing up on desktop web, we want to get them to use their tablet and mobile devices so they can enjoy design on the move as well. So we also wanted to encourage customers to connect on multiple devices. We also know there's a real strong relationship between consuming highlights, highlights content on the product, and retention. It kind of might be self-fulfilling, but we see that really, really clearly. So we also wanted to encourage customers to view highlights for, of content they've missed you know, for, for, for their favorite team or favorite events. Uh, as well as to, 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 to use VOD. And when they complete those checklist items, we congratulate them and encourage them to com complete the next item. So this is an example of how it looks visually in email in Canada. So there's the checklist, and then there's a series of email communications that encourage customers to complete those nudges, whether it be follow and set a reminder, watch on TV, download and watch on the go, watch to zone originals, or whatever it may be. We also... Um, early life, because a lot of our customers are coming in for a specific event, and therefore we can quite you know, quickly, within the first 24, 48 hours, often, because often customers come in last minute, we can understand what they're really, really interested in. That allows us to personalize quite quickly. So we know that they're coming for a big Champions League game, we can talk to them about content around Champions League, or they're coming for a big fight, we can talk to them around, around content around the big fight, and we can really tailor our communications early life, and that, you know, that's an, there's an example of it there. We also, of course, do these through push notifications as well. So you see here, these are the, some of the push notifications that we've executed in Germany. Again, live content, set a reminder, watch highlights, watch on mobile, watch on living room. And then, how this, this is an example of how the contact strategy actually works. So if we've executed this, because we have kind of super-sized markets, five super-sized markets, we've done a lot of testing. We've, we're testing multiple different contact strategies in different markets. So we have a welcome email with a checklist. So this is an example of uh, a contact strategy. Not all of the contact strategies are, uh, sorry, the, um, 
uh, the contact strategy is the same in each market. We've done a lot of testing across lots of different markets. So initially, we start with a welcome email with a checklist with a number of actions that we, we're encouraging customers to con complete in order to get the most out of the product. And when they complete that action, um, they'll get a, a, a congratulations that they've done that via push notification uh, and then encouragement to complete the next action. And then over the course of the first week, the very second communication they'll get after that first day is a people like you communication. Because as I said, cust customers come in for a particular event. We know they're interested in that particular event. event. They can consume that content. And very quickly, we can talk to them about things that are very relevant and, and, and you know, interesting to their profile. Then we get into maybe in the gaps between, you know, between live events. There's obviously often quite big gaps between fights, for example, in boxing. There's also gaps, obviously, between, between soccer matches. Less gaps between baseball, but there is still gaps in, 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 in our baseball activity in, in, in NFL as well. So in those gaps, promote non-live content, like video on demand content, to really kind of get customers engaged in, in, in the platform. And then at the end of that first week, we go back to customers and say, look, these are the, uh, the items that you complete so far. These are the next things that, the, that we'd like you to do. And so there's a load of different nudges that we've, we've tested, that we are planning to test, uh, and that have been used in different ways in different markets. So pay-per-view, multi-device, you know, download to mobile, follow a team, key moment. Um, that's a capability where you can view the content live, but you can flick to a key moment. So if you've, if you've missed and you want to catch up on the goals, you can quickly flick back on the, on the device and, and see those key moments, whether on your TV, on your, on your, on your mobile, or your, um, uh, on your desktop. Um, Watch party as well, we have this feature where customers together, and they've all got a subscription, can watch an event together. It's like having a Zoom call together, but where you're actually watching the event. So all of these nudges have been tested in different ways in different markets. And it's been relatively successful for us. I mean, it's early days. We've been doing this for about six to nine months or so. There's a lot of testing and trying to drive you know, long-term retention from early life engagement is you know, it's, it's a challenge for us, absolutely. But we've had some really good successes. So in Japan, we've seen significant improvements in platform engagement, mobile usage, highlights consumption, and usage of the follow and reminder service. In Spain, we've seen significant improvements in living room consumption and use of the follow and reminder service. And in, in Germany, we've seen improvements in active days, duration, use of mobile devices, and watching highlights. And so we've got, we got a few optimization plans underway as well. We, we're looking at trying to test shortening that journey, right? Because we have this high LA live churn, and because customers come in for a big event, and quite often it's very close to that event. How do we get that kind of onboarding journey to be really, really, really short? So they, they're using those features really, really quickly. So they're really getting into the depth of what we have available in the platform. And that's something we're really we're working on. We want to look as well, because this has only been running for six to nine months, at the, at the relationship between feature uses and long-term retention. So can we predict, I mentioned highlights, we know that highlights has a positive impact, but can we can predict that you know, through a combination of feature usage, we drive, we drive better retention? We also like deeper product integration, including uh, in-app uh, push within the living room devices as well, uh, as well as greater message center integration within the, within the product. We also um, are looking at building a specific onboarding journey for resubscribers. As I mentioned, customers often dip in and out of the platform because of um, uh, they're coming in for major events. So we don't currently send this program to resubscribers because they're already familiar, in many cases, the, the number of the features. But what we'd like to be able to do is to build tailored uh, onboarding journeys so that if you were on the platform um, previously and you used three of the different items on the checklist, there's another two or three that you haven't used yet, or we've released new features, we encourage them to use those new features. Um, and then also like to bring this nudge approach into the product um, uh, with a percentage feature usage metric. So uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar with LinkedIn and the, um, and the way in which that drives you to use the products and services is you know, very similar to that in terms of the, the principles where you have a kind of percentage profile complete. We like to bring that kind of capability into the, into the, into the product as well. So that's a kind of real quick rattle through of, of what we do in design in terms of our onboarding journey.